to Hillary Clinton and what I just did in my editorial there. She called Trump voters deplorable, racist, xenophobes, you name it. Roll tape. Just be grossly generalistic. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Nigel Farage is with us. He's the former UK Independence Party leader. He's the man who led the Brits out of the European Union. Now, Nigel, there's a bit of a delay in us speaking here, so I can't have a normal conversation with you. But let me just ask you a question, then you take it. They said exactly the same thing about you, did they not, when you were organizing Brexit. Go. Oh, yes. I mean, in fact, when David Cameron once was asked about UKIP voters, and I quote, he said they are loonies, fruitcakes, and closet racists mostly. Well, that was nice of the Prime Minister, wasn't it? Uh, to talk about millions of British people. Um, and what happened during the referendum was they said that Leave voters are old, angry, ill-educated, and motivated by racist thoughts. Now, the reason for doing that was to say to people in the middle, to say to undecided voters, look, for goodness sake, if you vote leave the EU, you are joining up with this appalling group of people. And that's exactly the same game that Hillary was trying to play just a few days ago. Um, and when she used the word deplorables, well, I'll tell you what I think. I think only one person comes out of this deplorably, and that's Hillary Clinton. Part of that same kind of elite that I saw in London, but in this case based in Washington, who has absolutely no understanding of how ordinary people live their lives. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> earlier this morning, Donald Trump, and I believe you have appeared with Donald Trump, you appeared with him in Mississippi a couple of weeks ago, you're basically a supporter yeah. of Donald Trump. He came out this morning and said that what Hillary had said over the weekend was one of the biggest mistakes of this political season. I take it you agree with him, and do you agree that what she said will actually turn a lot of people to Trump and not enhance her own support? Go. Well, what we've seen, I think, over the, over the Western world, um, you know, last 10, 20 years, is this new sort of political aristocracy uh, that have taken over. Um, and the Clinton family in America, uh, you know, sum that up rather beautifully. Um, and they are very out of touch with the views of ordinary people. Uh, and if they think, by insulting the silent majority, they're doing themselves a favour by effectively demeaning people, by demonising people, uh, then they were in for a big shock in Brexit, and I suspect she's in for a big shock in this American campaign as well. And I'll tell you why people simply have had enough of being sneered at by out-of-touch professional career political elites. Nigel, you can't hear them, but I know a few of our viewers will be cheering you on big time this morning, and we thank you very much for coming back on the show. Nigel Farage, everyone, we'll see you again soon. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller's investigation is facing continued criticism, as you know, from President Trump's transition team and from some Republicans on Capitol Hill. Corey Langhofer, who happens to be the counsel for Trump for America, well, he claims that Mueller's investigators failed to directly request records from the Trump transition team in its probe, and he says they should have instead properly gotten those with the subpoena. Instead, they got the documents, it seems, right from the federal agency, the GSA, that provided services to the transition team and did that without a warrant or a subpoena. So, did they need one? Mueller's team defending its actions today, saying they properly obtained the account owner's consent or used, they say, the appropriate criminal process Danny Colson, former FBI Deputy Assistant Director, former FBI Hostage Rescue Team Commander, joins us now. So, Danny, was this like a, a sneaky end run, you know, or a direct up the middle way to obtain this stuff? Did they, did they need these? <laughs> did they need a subpoena to get these texts, or could they just flinch them from the GSA because they're government property? Well, probably, not probably, absolutely. They should have gone to the White House for these documents. It's axiomatic in Washington, D.C. If you are an agency and you hold records from another agency, 
and a third party comes in to request them, you refer them to the originating agency. That's probably not the way to go. Is it illegal? No, it's not. Um, it, it, it just kind of violates the look bad rule here. I think the key, though, Eric, is this. The White House did not ask for redress for this um, through the federal court system. They didn't ask that the records be sealed or returned or put under court uh, protection. They sent a letter to the Congress, the Congressional, uh, Congressional Committee, saying, let's be sure this doesn't happen in the future. So I, I think it's kind of a tempest in a teapot. Should they have done it? Um, maybe not. But is it illegal? I don't think it's illegal. Bob Mueller is not going to do something illegal. I've worked with Bob. He and I did Pan Am 103 together. And he's a very good lawyer. Um, I question whether or not we should be still looking at the things he's looking at. Mm -hmm. But uh, he didn't know that. There's no illegal, illegality here. And yeah, well, tell me, you, been, you know him personally, and you just said you, the way you work with him personally. Tell us a bit about him, because, man, oh, man, he has come under attack. He has, and um, I, you know, for a lot of, of reasons that are really not of his making. A lot of that is spillover from things happening at the FBI. Bob Mueller is a brilliant man. He is uh, dedicated. He's a former Marine, very patriotic. He's very, very intense, and he's very good at what he does. Um, I enjoyed working with him. He is not a whole lot of fun. He's, he's so intense. He's not, uh, he's not uh, a big jokes or anything like that. But uh, he's good at what he does. I think he'll do a he'll do an admirable job here, and I have uh, I have faith in him. Well, you I know just what the critics would like say. Him to uh, wrap this up. You know what the <laughs> critics say. He's biased. He say that he's uh, you know others say he's uh, committed illegal acts that you know he should be fired and and resigned and all this. And here's what I would do if I was his boss, I'd call him into the office and say, "What do you have? What according to the mission they gave you?" What have you produced? Can he say that and to then, President? Can he say that to the Attorney General or, or, or to Ron, uh, or Rosenstein? It, it would be the Deputy Attorney General. Uh, he's his boss. Uh, an independent counsel case is not the never-ending story. It, it is not supposed to be there forever. You have a mission. You do it. And if you have some um, auxiliary investigation that has nothing to do with your mission that may indicate criminality, you record that and, and refer it back to the Department of Justice. Close shop and go away. If there's no case here, there's no case here. Now, one problem, though, and I think this is important, is that he doesn't want to close his case and find out later that, uh-oh, something came to light and I may have missed that. Uh, so that's, that. that's they, a problem. You went through that already that with Hillary. That is a huge problem. Uh, went yeah, through that exactly. exact thing. Remember that? No, oh, absolutely. And I've talked about that before. Yeah. Uh, but there has to be an end someplace. You know, you're, you're a veteran uh, of decades, and we have a lot of uh, allegations about uh, some of the FBI officials and the agents, Peter Stroke, for example, and Lisa Page. We've got those texts in which, you know, they're trashing President mm -hmm. Trump, and to be fair, others, too, calling Trump an idiot, also calling Bernie Sanders an idiot, criticizing Chelsea Clinton, uh, but also in these texts apparently saying, you know, God, Hillary, you know, has to win. Tell us about separating the personal from the professional. Uh, is that possible? What do you believe they did? Because you know what the critics are saying, that this is evidence of bias and they should all be thrown out. Well, FBI agents are human beings. Um, I, I had a political opinion about things. I never acted on it, obviously. I voted for Ronald Reagan. I did the Iran-Contra investigation. I went after him, hammer and tong, and, and actually indicted some people associated with that. You have, to, you have to step away from your bias or your preference with regard to politicians. But this, this is more sinister than that. You have these very onerous text messages, and the people that texted then go out and give Hillary Clinton a pass. Um, that 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 needs to be investigated. I think that there should be a grand jury that looks into the whole thing, um, uh, issue subpoenas, get people in, compel testimony, get documents, and see what happens. We can't let this just go away. Say, oh, oh well, uh, it's nothing. Well, we don't know it's nothing. Yeah. And you, if you look at the actions taken, um, there's 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 not there's more than smoke here. Yeah. You know, one of the actions Peter Stroke uh, reports say changed the wording. Uh, uh, of, he's in charge of the Hillary email investigation from grossly negligent, which would have been a, uh, a, a, a legal term, to extremely careless. And up on the screen now, we have one of those texts uh, in, involving Stroke and Page. And I want to just get your reaction to this, saying, sure. quote, I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office that there's no way he, Trump, gets elected. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely yes. event below, before you die, before you're 40. Now, there's a lot of controversy over this text. Andy could be Andy McCabe, deputy, uh, uh, you know, director of the FBI, talking about the path. Any idea what they're 
what they cooked up or what they were talking about in terms of the path, what they were planning and could, what could have been McCabe's office, though we don't know that. Well, we don't know that, but, but here's, the, here's the problem. People making statements like that then took action that actually worked to the great benefit of Hillary Clinton. The, the mere fact that they went along with an investigation without a grand jury and then went away, along with the idea that they could not investigate the Clinton Foundation showing their feelings for Hillary Clinton, that's, that's more than problematic. That is very sinister. And that needs to be examined. In the, and I, I don't want a special prosecutor. We don't need that. What we need is for the Inspector General of the United States, Department of Justice, to, to look at this thing and give us an answer. Convene a grand jury. Don't do this sophomoric, um, a grand jury less investigation. And bring a grand jury in, present the evidence. And one thing, too, this is really important. Mm -hmm. We've never seen the FBI report on Hillary Clinton. We've just seen a synopsis of it, synopsis of it, drafted by uh, by Jim Comey. What, are the, what does the report really say? A re FBI report is made up of FD302s, reports mm -hmm. of investigation. Let's see what those say. And we've never seen that. Those are, who knows where those things right, are. Release, Until release, we see that, we don't know. Release those 302s, says Danny Colson. Absolutely. Danny? Absolutely. Thank you very much, as always. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Best to you over the of holidays. Of course, you too.